we are actually going to be bouncing around, like I said, in a couple of scriptures. And we're learning from scripture what it means to be generous. And so we're going to read three different pieces of scripture. And in each passage, I want us to answer three questions. What is the instruction or instructions in the, these verses? Why does he, God writing through humans, say to do these things? And how does it apply to us today? Right? First, we need to talk about something, though. Two of these are from the book of Proverbs, and the other one is from the book of 2 Thessalonians. That's in the New Testament. And it was a letter written by Paul to a real church of Christians in Thessalonica. Okay? The, in Proverbs, so there are some books of wisdom literature. The book of Proverbs, the book of Job, and the book of, of Ecclesiastes. And uh, Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, Solomon, King Solomon, David's son, wrote. Okay? Um, Job is the oldest uh, book of the Bible that exists, okay? And so uh, it is written as a, as a event between, uh, as an event that happened to a man and then how he has these conversations with his friends, with his wife, and with God. And these books are called wisdom literature because especially Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, Solomon says lots of things like, if you do this, this will happen. And what he's saying are really wise things, and they wouldn't be in the Bible if God didn't approve of them, right? But they're not necessarily promises, okay? It's not like uh, in Scripture where you said, the Lord God says, do this then. Does that make sense? Because some of these we're going to read and we're going to go, wait a minute, the world doesn't actually work that way. Okay? And Solomon wasn't a perfect person. He was a human, just like us. He made good decisions. He made bad decisions. So we're going to read this, and I bet you'll notice a little bit of what I'm talking about. So our first one, I'm going to use the screen today because we're going to pop around a little bit, and I thought that might be easier for you. But you can totally pause me and go get your Bible, because like I said, two of these passages are in Proverbs. The other one's in 2 Thessalonians, and you can find those. I'm going to assume you're back with me now. All right, we're going to read the first one. Proverbs 3, verses 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with your wealth. Give him the first share of all your crops. Then your storerooms will be so full, they can't hold everything. Your huge jars will spill over with fresh wine. Now, first thing to know, he's talking to a group of people who they don't go to work as engineers and get a paycheck, right? Um, they get paid in different ways. Most of these people are going to be growing their food, their own food and, and, and drink and animals and all that kind of stuff. So he's talking specifically about the wealth of a nation, the wealth of your family. At that point, a lot of it the literal what you could see well came from what they grew okay and so he's saying when you take your crops in when you go and you harvest your grain you pull your vegetables from the ground when you kill animals at the end of the season um, so that you can smoke their meat and keep it just like we dip net and things like that we go hunting he says when you do that Give God the first from the beginning of it, right? He says, don't, don't wait until all of it's in and you go, oh, I have a lot. I can give God some. He goes, nope. When you first start bringing it in, you give God that. Because that shows God you trust he's going to provide for you. You're not saying, I'm going to take care of this. I'm going to take care of me first. I'll give God the extra. That's not trusting God to provide for you. And so he says, if you give him the first of all your crops, then 
you're gonna get so much crops and, and grape juice, all that kind of stuff, that your storerooms are gonna overflow. You're gonna have so much. This is where I'm talking about. This is one of those, this is a human if then statement, right? So I give God back part of my paycheck every time I get paid, right? Does that mean my freezer and refrigerators are overflowing or my bank account is so full, I have like money? No, but it means I have enough. Because if, if that's how you measured it, then a poor person who, a, a poor person according to us, who doesn't have very much money or doesn't have very much stuff, but they're still giving to God from the little bit that they have, well, they must be doing something wrong because they don't have a lot. So that's where we go. This is about attitude and your heart, not literally, if you do this, you're going to get a lot. Okay? It's talking about what's in your heart. Do you trust God to take care of your needs? And we have to remember that the way he takes care of our needs may not look the way we thought it was going to look. All right, so let's go. So his instruction is give him the first share of all your crops. And then the, so what then is your storerooms will be so full. So how does this apply to kids today in America, in Anchorage, in Alaska? If you earn money, you're supposed to give God back some of that money. You give it to the church to help pay for all this stuff, to pay for putting videos online, to pay my salary, to pay for toilet paper, pay for all of that. You can give it uh, to an organization that supports missionaries, different things like that, to, to help God's work get done and get bigger, right? So there are things that you can do. If you don't earn money, which is possible, then you share your things. Does that make sense? You give, you give things to people who need things because you have a few things that you're in charge of and you pay attention and you're generous and maybe it's you're generous with your time. When you see that your neighbor needs their driveway shoveled in the winter, you just go shovel it. That's generous, right? If there's somebody lonely in your neighborhood, you give up some of your video game time or your whatever play time and you go, you go there and you hang out with them. That's generous. Make sense? All right, next one. This is Proverbs chapter 11, verses 25 and 28. And you can read 26, 27. We're just gonna skip them for time. Anyone who gives a lot will succeed. Anyone who renews others will be renewed. Those who trust in their riches will fall, but those who do right will be as healthy as a green leaf. So what is he saying to do? Give a lot. And it's saying renew others. So give a lot kind of makes sense. Renew others. That means encourage. Help others. When they're tired, do some of their work for them. If they're lonely, join them. If they need to know Jesus, tell them about Jesus. If they need money to pay their bills, help them with their bills. Make sense? So he's saying, give a lot. Don't give just a tiny bit. Don't, don't be stingy. Be generous. And not just with your money but with your time and your energy, helping others. Now, go back to the same thing as before. He says, if you give a lot, you will succeed. Now let's think about this. You will succeed. According to the world that we live in, success means you're super fancy. You drive a fancy car, you have lots of money, you're the best at your job or your school, you have the best clothes, success. You make straight A's, success. Is that what God thinks success is? Not really. That might happen. 
that might be what God helps you to do. But what God thinks success is, is that you're showing God fruit, that you're loving others, that you are generous, that you are kind, that you are patient, that you are doing the things that God puts in front of you to do. You are doing your God jobs. If you are doing your God jobs, you are successful, even if it doesn't mean you're rich with money. Does that make sense? That's a hard one. It's not fair because that also means that some people who are not generous, who are not obeying God, they're getting rich. They're getting what, the, what everybody else calls successful. And they're not making right choices. And let me just tell you, it's not fair. And Jesus said, you're right, it's not fair. But it's going to happen that way. So, don't trust in your riches. Don't trust in your plans. Don't trust in the things that you have to take care of you and make you happy. Only God can provide for your needs, give you what you need, and you only find your joy and your peace through your relationship with Jesus. Okay? All right, last one, 2 Thessalonians. So if you're following in your Bibles, that's awesome. I'm super, super proud of you. This is Old Testament. You're going to flip way back, okay? And it's a smaller book. Or look, look in your table of contents. It's 1 Thessalonians and 2 Thessalonians. So it's 2 Thessalonians, T-H-E-S. We're going to be in chapter 3, verses 10 through 13. Pause it if you need a second to find it. So Paul is writing this letter. He's been to this church before, and he's reminding them of some things that, he, that they went over when he was there in person. Okay. Even when we were with you. This is kind of a hard one, okay? Even when we were with you, we gave you a rule. We said, anyone who will not work will not eat. We hear that some people among you don't want to work. They're not really busy. Instead, they're just bothering other people. We belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. So we strongly command people like that to settle down. They have to earn the food they eat. Brothers and sisters, don't ever get tired of doing the right thing. Thing. Now this verse right here, these three verses, it's got a whole lot in it. And as Americans, there's a whole lot we argue with. And we go, well, Jesus said this, but this is what's it. So let's look at this. Okay? Let's remember, let's go over real quick right now. What are the three instructions Jesus left us with? Love God with all your heart, with all your life. Right? Love yourself with all your heart and all your life. Love others with all your heart and all your life. And that's what we're talking about, right? So let's read this. So evidently in Thessalonica, there was an issue with people who were just lazy and they didn't want to work. And they had heard that the Christians, I guess, maybe it was their, their community at, at large, would they didn't have to work. They could just go bum food off of them and a place to live. And it would be taken care of, and they could just be lazy. And Paul taught them as a new church, no, that is not okay for you. As Christians, you need to work. You need to earn your way. You need to earn money for your food. You need to earn money to play for a place to live. You need to work, okay? So he didn't say you need to work and you need to make thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars and have a super huge hap. He said, don't be lazy. And he says, boop, boop, boop. we hear some of you don't want to work, but they're really not busy. So does this mean if you're going to school that you shouldn't get to eat because you can't work because you're at school all day? Or you should go to school and then work all night? No, that's not, what, that's not what he's saying. He's saying, these people are busy. They're lazy. There are different situations where people are going to high school and then working in the evenings. 
to make money to help pay for their parents' apartment where they live or to pay for groceries. Or college students who are going to school and they're working or adults who are going back to school and working. So that's a thing, right? They're not lazy, they're working a lot. And maybe that's where God wants you to be generous with what you have, is to help some of those people. But he's not saying, you know what? Just stay home and watch TV all day. Don't worry about it. Somebody else will pay for your house and pay for your food. He says, as Christians, that's not okay. Right? He says, work. Don't annoy other people because you're just laying around all day, pestering them to pay for your life. He says, we belong to Jesus, so settle down so that you can, you can take care of things, right? Jesus, Jesus tells us in Galatians, fruit of the Spirit, one of it is self-control. Well, I don't want to go to school today. I don't want to go to work. I don't really like my job. I don't like mowing the yard for for five dollars so that I can buy this toy or whatever. I don't like doing chores. I don't like doing extra cleaning to earn money to buy the stuff. I just want you to give it to me. No. He says, don't be lazy. Work. And then he says this, because he knows I'm a kind of lazy girl and I get tired because it's not always fair. Sometimes other people, they don't work and they got lots of money. How's that fair? Brothers and sisters, don't ever get tired of doing the right thing. So even if I have to work really hard to buy my groceries and somebody else only has to work a little bit to earn the same amount of money, or not at all, it doesn't matter. If I'm doing what God told me to do, and I'm doing right, then that's my job. And the Holy Spirit will help me to do that and not get tired. I make my body may get tired. My emotions may get frustrated. But if I let the Holy Spirit help with my, my emotions, the Holy Spirit can help with my body too. So this isn't about telling people, if you don't have a job, I can't give you any food. You're in charge of you. And this is written to Christians, okay? So be careful about your judgy pants. Ask yourself, am I loving God, loving me, and loving others in my choice right now? Because if we refuse to work and we just want people to give us stuff, that's not loving others or loving God. And actually, not loving you either because you're not learning how to do hard things. That's one of the things God wants you to learn. So this was not a super fun lesson this week because it's all about sharing what we have when I don't always want to share what I have. But when I do, it shows God that I trust him, that he's going to take care of me. And I recognize what's important. Right? That's a big deal. So maybe you could play Monopoly today. Yeah, I don't play Monopoly because it frustrates me. My husband buys out everything and I lose all my money. He's really good at it. But in life, he's incredibly generous. So maybe you could play Monopoly. Maybe you could play another game and you could practice being generous rather than keeping everything. I don't know. Let me know how it goes, friends. I love learning with you. This was a big reminder lesson for me about my attitude because I have to do my budget this weekend. I love you, friends. I hope you're doing well. Let me know if there's a way we can be praying for you, okay? We celebrate with the good stuff and we pray for you and the hard stuff too. Bye, friends.